called, that God has anointed. He has operated under the gift of faith. He is an apostle of faith, prophet of prosperity, and founder of Word of Faith, Robert Tilton. Mr. Tilton has a special message addressing the lies and twisted allegations the media recently has launched. Please don't edit it to pieces and make me look bad again. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, people. Give me a little break. Come on, people. Give me $10,000. All preachers are bad, and some of them have made some serious mistakes. They'll do anything to make a buck, including lying or stepping on people. Send your checks to us. $10,000. They'll do anything to make $10,000. Federal agents are at your house and have a warrant. So what? Federal agents are at your house and have a warrant. Did God really say that? Federal agents seized Tilton's house in drug bust. The, 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 the audacity. We owe two hundred thousand dollars worth of back taxes. That's how we are. What are we doing? What are we doing with the money? Well, obviously we're spending it. Now I'm making payments on the boat and I'm making payments on the house. Tilton's house. house, not any mansion. Some people are tall enough. They're not. Jesus makes nothing out of something. The audacity. Get that religious garbage out of your brain. Did God really say that? That's singing in tongues for you illiterate folks out there. Stop giving this organization. Go ahead. Let, Let the, the devil, devil use this. Please don't edit it to pieces and make me look bad again. Hallelujah. Wrapping up our conversation with Ole Anthony and Chris Tucker about religious satire and satire's role in society in general. The place that satire has its, to me, its most importance is in religion. Why is that? Because they are portraying this idiotic picture of, our, of, of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, my God, they're caricatures. Mm -hmm. they're, like they're, what? Give me an example. Well, we, we've talked about one, Robert Tilton. Mm -hmm. We, we, we see these guys, I mean, everything they do is phony. Okay. And well, in case someone who hasn't seen him, what does he do that's phony? What, what were some of the things that he, he did that goes against your opinion of how a minister... Have you ever heard God? him talk in tongues? <laughs> no. I believe in talking in uh -huh. tongues. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But and when he talk in, talks in tongues, it sounds like he's selling a used car. What was his famous phrase? Koshanda Bashanda Bahanda. Uh, Somebody's that. coming to buy my Honda. <laughs> what I loved, if I can toss in one here, what, one of my favorite was when Tilton would, you know, he's here on this glittering set, and he's living in mansions all over America and driving great cars, and he says, in a moment, I'm going into my prayer chapel to humble myself. <laughs> I, I just, I just yeah. love that. Yeah. I could play that back and yeah. all that. But the question I think really is important is, does God have a sense of humor? And does he? Well, of course. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> the reason God let people like Tilton and W.B. Grant and the others come up into the fog is so we could see ourselves. <laughs> chose the foolish things, and that would be me, to confound the wise. You can search heaven and earth and not find another like the Reverend Bob Tilton of Dallas, Texas. His powers are manifold. I can build houses, shopping centers, high-rise hotels in my sleep. <laughs> Trust me. And if I wanted to go out there and work in a secular job, believe me, I wouldn't be a pauper. I would be a multi-billionaire. Okay? His message, unique. They love to quote me when I do bad verbiage. His voice, hypnotic. In a moment, going into my chapel, I'm going to kneel down and pray. I want so much to pray for you. But I know that God's got... He, hama, haba. 
his enemies legion. You see, I know that I'm mocked, ridiculed, written about, laughed about, even bumper stickers made about me. But how can I look at this camera with such boldness, such bravery and courage? <laughs> His authority unchallenged. Satan sees that step of faith and he says, he says, oh no, oh no, Tilton didn't shut his mouth. No, Tilton didn't shut his mouth because you're worth it. You're worth it. His generosity boundless. A thousand dollar vow of faith, big deal. We got people on welfare that's got enough faith to make a thousand dollar vow and paying it. His mystery profound. See, it, it has to do with Mars. The spaceships from outer space. I think that's what it's all about. It's about the cosmics. And it's about interplanetary crossings and alignments. There is only one Bob Tilton, and for that, we are truly grateful. I'm John Bloom, and this has been God Stuff. Well, I'm probably the most checked up on preacher in America. <laughs> Channel 8 News reported this morning that Candace Caminati of Houston claimed local TV evangelist Robert Tilton raped her when she worked for him in 1982. We also reported Caminati claimed she never filed the complaint because Tilton paid her hush money for 11 years. That report was broadcast without first speaking to Caminati or Tilton. The spokesman for both of them later denied the statements. The report was broadcast as the result of a mistake by this television station. Channel 8 retracts the report in its entirety and apologizes to Candace Caminati and Robert Tilton for the error. Well, in other news, televangelist Robert Tilton wants to sue a Tulsa lawyer and five others for denying his right to exercise his religion. Now, Tilton alleges that Tulsa attorney Gary Richardson and the other defendants conspired against him and his church because of bigotry. Now, you may remember Richardson represents two women who sued the church. The U.S. Supreme Court will decide if Tilton can sue. Former television evangelist Robert Tilton is fighting back. Tilton and his church have filed a libel and slander lawsuit against one of Tilton's longtime adversaries. The suit claims Olay uh, Anthony Trinity and members Foundation of his Trinity Foundation defamed ABC. Tilton at a news conference uh, last September. Anthony's group said Tilton was taking money out of the country and defrauding the American public. Anthony says he's flabbergasted by the lawsuit. He says Tilton has money for frivolous lawsuits, but not for paying his former workers unemployment benefits. Elsewhere on the legal front, former television preacher Bob Tilton may be hauled into court and told to prove he can perform miracles and heal people. The Dallas minister says he has healed many people of cancer, AIDS, and other diseases. He left television last summer saying he was forced off the air by enemies led by the devil. In fighting a lawsuit filed by an ex-member of the church, Tilton's lawyers appealed the judge's order to turn over names and medical records of followers. Today in Austin, the Supreme Court of Texas heard both sides. There has been quite a bit of harassment and ridicule and even death threats involving certain members of the church. He confesses over breadth with regard to the baptism documents. He confesses he wishes to contest these people's religious beliefs. He basically wishes to engage in religious persecution. And Mr. Tilton has stated in deposition that he has no medical proof of any healing except possibly one, as the gentleman supposedly cured of AIDS. Robert Tilton didn't show up here. The word is that he is seen at his church every Sunday, and since his divorce, he's now living with an old friend who used to work for him. We weren't able to reach the TV preacher. People who know him tell us now he's working on a new project, a television ministry for children. The justices listen to both sides, then promise they will rule later. Until they do, the Smith trial cannot happen in Dallas, and all of the other legal action against Bob Tilton is on hold. Yet another legal defeat, defeat rather, for Dallas-based televangelist Robert Tilton. This time it comes from the U.S. Supreme Court. Tilton tried to sue a group of Tulsa lawyers claiming they were trying to ruin his word of faith ministry. Earlier, a lower court dropped the suit, and today the U.S. Supreme Court upholds the decision. Tulsa lawyers represent former parishioners of Tilton who were suing him on charges of fraud. 
A legal victory tonight for former television evangelist Robert Tilton. The Texas Supreme Court today ruled that Tilton may keep information about his followers private. Norma Smith of Dallas sued Tilton, and District Judge Eric Moyer ordered the preacher to provide her with information about his purported miracles. The state Supreme Court, however, said Moyer abused his discretion, and Tilton's lawyers say they are pleased with today's ruling. Former TV evangelist Robert Tilton's multi-million dollar lawsuit against several news organizations and a nonprofit foundation has been dismissed. Yesterday, a federal judge threw out Tilton's suit, saying the former religious leader could not, uh, the former television evangelist could not support charges that his constitutional rights were violated. The suit had alleged ABC News, WFAA Channel 8, the Dallas Morning News, and the Trinity Foundation conspired to falsely accuse Tilton of fraud. Farmers Branch Police responded to a disturbance at Robert Tilton's Worth of Faith Church this morning. Police say that during a discussion of church goals, one church member refused to sit down and be quiet. He was escorted out by two security guards, but not arrested. Other church members reportedly left with him in protest. In Dallas, a judge says he'll send federal marshals to serve Robert Tilton with the subpoena if he doesn't show up in court tomorrow. A woman is suing Tilton for videotaping a testimonial of her that she says was unauthorized. A videotaped testimonial leads to a multi-million dollar lawsuit against TV evangelist Robert Tilton. Up to now, Tilton and his lawyers have been able to keep all the lawsuits against him from coming to trial. But that has changed today in a federal courtroom in Dallas. We get our report tonight from Channel 8's Bill Brown. This is a videotaped testimonial put together by the people in Reverend Bob Tilton's television production department. The woman in it is Vivian Elliott of Port Ritchie, Florida. She says as a child, she was sexually abused by her father and her brother. That had caused her so much torment, she decided to take her life. But she says before she could do that, God spoke to her and stopped her. That later, she saw Bob Tilton's television show, and Tilton helped her, so much so that she began to send him money and later wrote him a letter thanking him. Tilton's people liked her letter so much, they talked the woman into doing a testimonial to run on his television show. Elliot said she would do it, but only if any money it made went to build a shelter for battered women. Apparently, no such shelter was ever built. The tape was made and broadcast, and Elliot says she was appalled that Tilton went out and hired actors and then twisted her story into one that took all the credit away from God and gave it to Tilton. She's now suing Tilton for fraud, conspiracy, and causing her emotional distress. The trial began before federal judge Joe Kendall. Tilton's lawyer, Rhonda Byrd, told the jury Vivian Elliott has nothing coming, that she helped make that testimonial, she knew what was in it, that the tape is honest and not a manipulation in any way. Byrd said repeatedly the preacher was simply trying to publish the gospel. She declined to speak with us. Elliott's lawyer, Gary Richardson, told the jury that some call Tilton a prophet, while really he's a profiteer. Tilton wasn't in court this morning when federal judge Joe Kendall walked back into court this afternoon. He asked, and this is a quote, do we have a confirmed sighting of Brother Tilton? The answer was no. His attorney says he's out of town. The judge has asked us not to talk to the press until the trial is over. In court, though, Rhonda Byrd defends her client. She says Mrs. Elliott wanted to talk and changed her mind only after a negative story about Tilton appeared on a news magazine show. As for whether her client would be in court when the case continues tomorrow, Bird replied, I hope so. Said the judge, I hope so too. TV evangelist Robert Tilton spends a bruising afternoon on the witness stand. One of his ex-followers is suing him, and for the first time, the North Texas preacher is facing tough questions under oath before a jury. In a federal courtroom, the former TV preacher showed both anger and tears today under a barrage of questions. And Channel 8's Bill Brown was there. You made it. The smile on Reverend Bob Tilton's face would soon fade as he walked into the courthouse, headed into a trial every bit as full of drama as any tabloid TV show or soap opera. For years, Bob Tilton has been rich and confident and in control in his electronic pulpit. But in this federal courtroom, he's very much on the defensive, trying to ward off a legal onslaught. Elliot's lawyer, Gary Richardson, told the jury Tilton has been running a business and a scheme, not a real ministry in church. In the bruising court session, the attorney went after the evangelist with some tough, probing questions. Tilton was very emotional. He flared into anger at times. His face got red. At times, his voice dropped to a whisper. His voice was shaking. He hung his head, and he cried, looking directly at the jury. Repeatedly, Tilton said he is a prophet of God who only wants to help trouble people. He is not a crook. 
A number of times, the pastor gave an answer to a question. Then Richardson led him back to earlier answers given in deposition. Tilton would then read the testimony and be forced to admit his answer on the stand was wrong or untrue. Tilton's lawyer objected often and loudly to some of the questions. She said they are not relevant to this case, but attacks on the reverend's religious beliefs. Again and again, Tilton said everything he does is completely protected by the First Amendment, his freedom of religion. How do you think it went for you today? The judge has told us not to make any comments on the trial, so we're going to respect that. The Reverend told us the real news is that he just won a big victory. The Dallas County Appraisal District, after a battle, agreed that he does run a church and does not have to pay taxes on much of his property. That will save him almost $300,000 a year. Tilton challenged the press, which he says lies about him, to report that singling out Channel 8 News. Hey, here's some good news for us. It's going to be interesting to see how you report that. <laughs> this will be real interesting yeah. to see how you report, report that. Good news. This case resumes in federal court Tuesday morning, but the lawyers are finished with Bob Tilton. The judge's words to Tilton, you're free to come and go as you please or go back to wherever it was you came from. A Florida woman wept on the stand this afternoon, recalling how former televangelist Robert Tilton nearly destroyed her faith in God. Vivian Elliott is suing Tilton for allegedly misusing an interview and then for rebroadcasting a reenactment of her being sexually abused. Elliott became emotional talking about how she trusted Tilton. She says she felt used when she saw how Tilton's ministry broadcast her interview even after she requested it be taken off the air. And in another high-profile trial, final arguments today in the trial of the Reverend Robert Tilton defending himself against fraud and other charges. Channel 8's Bill Brown has been waiting for a verdict at the federal court proceedings, and he has this live report. Bill? Tracy, we know one thing for sure. There will be no decision tonight uh, in this, the Reverend Bob Tilton trial. This jury went home about 45 minutes ago after deliberating almost four hours. In his closing argument, the woman's lawyer, Gary Richardson, told the jury that Tilton runs not a church, but a religious scheme just to rake in money. He said the evangelist made millions of dollars and he has escaped punishment by hiding behind the First Amendment. On the other side of this case is Tilton's lawyer, Rhonda Byrd. She told the jury this could be a landmark case affecting all religions. She argued that nobody can prove if Bob Tilton is an angel or a prophet, and nobody can make him prove his religious beliefs. Bird painted Elliot as a mentally ill, greedy person just out for some money. I'm just glad that I got the opportunity to say what I felt was right and do the right thing. Now, we wanted to talk to Reverend Tilton uh, and his legal team, but throughout this trial, they have uh, refused to talk with reporters, and today they left the courthouse without saying anything. Elliot's lawyer did tell us he feels the fact the jury did not come back with a verdict quickly is good for his side. He, uh, he feels that means uh, that they may win this. The seven people on the jury, the uh, four men and three women, will be back here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning to start anew in their deliberations. After two days of deliberations, the jury in the fraud trial of Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton has broken for the night again without a verdict. Jurors began deliberating yesterday afternoon and resumed this morning. Mike and Vivian Elliott say they were victims of a get-rich-quick scheme by Tilton's Word of Faith Church. Tilton's attorneys say the trial is about religious freedom. This is News for Texas at 5. Quit ripping off America, that's what they're saying. A major judgment hits TV preacher Robert Tilton more than $1 million. It happened in federal court this morning in Dallas. A jury slapped $1.5 million in damages on Tilton for fraud and breach of contract. Mark Alford is live now at Tilton's Word of Faith Church in Farmer's Branch with more on the judgment. Mark? Dell, this is clearly a big blow for Robert Tilton and his already floundering ministry. Behind me is the Word of Faith Family Church and Outreach Center, at one time the headquarters for the Robert Tilton Empire. Now it's unclear whether or not this property or any part of it will be auctioned off to help pay for the $1.5 million judgment. Elliot, what do you think of this? Mike and Vivian Elliott were walking on cloud nine today as they got off the federal courthouse elevator. After nearly two full days of deliberation, a jury made them one and a half million dollars richer, finding that televangelist Robert Tilton had defrauded the couple by misusing their $3,500 pledge, even though they had actually only given the ministry $33. With me now here at the federal courthouse, the man who won this case for the Elliotts, Mr. Gary Richardson. This is not the last you're going to have to do with uh, Mr. Tilton, is it? No, we have some more cases, and I suspect we'll be in trial some more with him. What do you think convinced the jury that Mr. Tilton was guilty of these charges? Robert Tilton's conduct. 
That's exactly what convinced them. What do you mean by that? Defrauding the public. They found him guilty of, of fraud. They found him guilty of conspiracy to defraud. Uh, what he tells people, you know, the way he manipulates them to get their money. Mr. Richardson, however, is uh, on a crusade, a crusade to basically abolish the right to practice religion in this country as people are entitled to. What do you say in defense of Ms. Bird's accusation that you were on a crusade to shut down televangelists? Not that I know of. Maybe, maybe she's seen an agenda I haven't seen. I'm on a crusade to represent people that have been harmed and have been defrauded. That's been my crusade ever since I've been a lawyer for over 20 years. So what's next for Mr. Tilton and you? Go back to the courthouse. Well, so far, Tilton and his former wife have not been available for comment. News 4 Texas reporter Bud Gillette tells us the local ministry is referring all questions to the church's attorney, J.C. Joyce of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Word of faith, how may I direct your call? Though not talking for the record, a large computer printed okay, banner boldly proclaims the support for Pastor Robert Tilton. What I've been told is to refer you to J.C. Joyce, his office. From Tulsa, Joyce will say only that he expects to appeal and did not address what effect, if any, the verdict might have on the congregation. What I'm attempting to do is, is, is try to see if someone with the ministry cares to discuss how this likely would affect the ministry. Uh, we have no comment. Everything has to come from J.C. The church itself is empty on weekdays, but across the street at a school headed by Marty yeah, Tilton, like Rick Appleby but, tells me uh, he's shocked a jury could church. find for the plaintiffs. Uh, you know, I find it's it, it kind of bad that a person can, can receive such a, a, a large amount of money when basically what was said is what was put into the story. Appleby wasn't involved in the Elliott story, though he used to produce and direct Word of Faith TV programs. He feels media stories in the past few years have put Tilton at an unfair disadvantage. And I think part of the problem in, in the verdict is that, that he had a bad name here in, in Dallas. I, I don't really think that he could receive a fair trial here in Dallas. What Robert Tilton is doing... This afternoon in their lawyer's office, Vivian and Mike Elliott talked about the $1.5 million judgment in their favor. They say the money is not what's important. Actually, what I'm hoping for Mr. Tilton is that he'll turn his life around and uh, realize that uh, he's been teaching the wrong thing to people. That's not a belief that he's preaching. That's uh, just out and out, uh, send me your money. Ole Anthony, the man who helped expose Tilton in a television news show, calls the verdict a landmark civil fraud case. He is calling it a message to televangelists everywhere. Well, it's a landmark case. It's going to cause them all to be very, very careful in their extravagant claims and their literally the, the lies they many times tell that they excuse because they're talking about God, and it's just sick. Anthony says he hopes the church will recover, but that it will ask Tilton to resign. Texas News 5's Barry Sims covered the trial for us and has the latest. Barry? Well, Jane and Mike, jurors in the fraud case say religion was never a factor, and they have nothing personal against Robert Tilton or his church. They just find it unlawful how he conducts business. The public now knows by the verdict of this jury that's heard all of this evidence that this man has been defrauding people for a long time. Tilton, who testified during the trial, is out of town. But his former wife, who was in court today, says she wasn't surprised by the one and a half million dollar judgment. Are we guilty? No, absolutely not. Are you looking forward to appealing this case? We are looking forward to appealing. I believe the public opinion is uh, so tainted by the press. Um, no, I wasn't surprised. Doesn't mean it's right. I trust that in the end, uh, we will be vindicated. In the meantime, we just have to walk through it. We think that the jury just did not listen to the evidence quite closely enough, but if uh, Judge Kendall does not undo what the jury has done, we will appeal. But jurors say they did go over all of the evidence and found that Tilton was reckless with his followers' emotions. Reckless with people's feelings of what there are. Their trust. Their trust in the, you know, in the church. And not following a more careful procedure. Uh, is not a good way to raise money. Throughout the whole trial, it was nothing. It was no better than a farce from from the from the defense's side of the case. Reverend Tilton left long before the verdict. He's believed to be back in the Florida Keys. He still faces other lawsuits now in Texas and Oklahoma. In fact, there will be a hearing on one widow's case in Dallas on Friday. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News. It just seems to me like he was trying to tell everybody we're going to do whatever we want no matter what, no matter who we hurt.
Mario Gomez is one of 12 jurors who spent 13 hours deciding whether Robert Tilton defrauded Vivian and Mike Elliott. Gomez says although the defense cited religion as key in this case, the jury ended up believing the plaintiff's argument that Robert Tilton was only using religion. The way we looked at it, why it's so important is to see if a uh, church can hide behind the First Amendment. Uh, it seems to me that the, uh, um, the Tilton ministry was trying to do that. This was a case in which a con artist cheated a couple and the jury recognized it as such and awarded damages for what this con artist did. I don't think this is a major religious uh, freedom case. It's a SMU visiting law professor Steve Gardner investigated charges of charitable abuse against Tilton in 1992 when Gardner worked with the state as an assistant attorney general. Gardner says his own investigation into charges against Tilton focused not on religion but on secular promises to do good on earth that went unfulfilled. He views the Elliott case as the same kind of legal argument. Well this should certainly send a signal to uh, any other crooked preachers out there not to take advantage of uh, people's true beliefs. That's exactly what Juror Gomez says was the idea behind the jury's guilty verdict. He says some of the testimony from witnesses associated with the Tiltons convinced jurors that their verdict should send a strong message. He said that uh, we can believe any, any belief we have uh, even to the point of defrauding the public. Gomez says that kind of testimony convinced jurors the case did not center on religion. Tilton's attorney maintains it does. She says she'll appeal the verdict. And Tilton's lawyer says her appeal will come if the judge declines her motion to, in her words, correct the jury's verdict. In this country, big-time TV preacher Robert Tilton has received the word from a jury. Some of the people Tilton hit up for money hit back in court. Correspondent Vicki Mabry has chapter and verse on it. We are here to worship the Lord. It's another large and perhaps fatal blow to one of the last big televangelists, Robert Tilton. Answering a Tilton appeal for funds for a church-sponsored crisis center, Mike and Vivian Elliott donated money and an emotional tape testimonial. Through Robert Tilton, the Lord gave me my family back. The center never materialized. The Elliotts, disillusioned, sued for fraud and a jury found in their favor. Quit ripping off America, that's what they're saying. Been terrible, but I'm glad that I did it. Part of Tilton's claims to his followers was that God would allow them to prosper if they donated to his church. But in the wake of increasingly bad publicity and mounting lawsuits, it was Tilton's television ministry that stopped reaping rewards and went off the air last fall. The devil wants to paralyze. Like some other televangelists before him, Tilton's grandiose claims and lavish lifestyle did him in. His attorney plans to appeal. The jury basically just went on an emotional level rather than paying close attention to the evidence. The head of a religious watchdog organization in Dallas says exposure is weeding out the frauds in the televangelism business. It's a landmark decision. From now on, they're going to have to have accountability. In the Elliott's case, Tilton's claims may be true. Donating to his church did bring them prosperity to the tune of a million and a half dollar jury award. Vicki Mabry, CBS News, Dallas. In other news today, Robert Tilton talks. The controversial evangelist is back at the pulpit. Songs of praise ring out at the Word of Faith Temple today. Loyal followers of Robert Tilton clutch their Bibles and look for direction. Tilton is determined to lead his flock despite his legal woes. Remember these words, the sun is always shining no matter where you are as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. The televangelist is back at the pulpit today preaching to even fewer than before. In his sermon he jokes about his troubles and says quitters never win and winners never quit. He knows many question his ability to continue the ministry. I think the major reason is, is with all the negative press that's been generated, I don't think the jury felt they had any other choice. At one time, this parking lot used to be full on Sundays. Tilton's church used to have a loyal following of about 8,000 members. Today, that number is considerably less. Sometimes in a different situation, you have an exodus of uh, followers at you know, different points. Sometimes they can handle the heat, and sometimes they can't. So I, it's not me to question who they are and where their faith are. What made a dwindling ministry worse is this week's jury ruling that Tilton defrauded a Florida woman. 
Now, $1.5 million of the church's money will pay for Tilton's mistake. He vows not to give up. Of course not. It's 100% appealable. We're not concerned about it, and we're just going on with the great things of God. For now, he goes on with a lot less money and a dwindling flock. Two, one. At one time, Reverend Robert Tilton was one of the hottest TV preachers around, raking in millions of dollars. But an Inside Edition investigation exposed Tilton's ministry, and now he's the one paying up. Steve Wilson with an update. Close your eyes, bow your head, and open your body and look. <laughs> when we first met an investigated TV preacher, Robert Tilton, his critics told us he was fleecing his flock out of more than a million bucks a week. Every day on television stations across the country, Tilton was promising that God would shower prosperity upon anyone who would send donations to his Dallas ministry. And if you refuse to give? Just then, just, you saw me take a breath in. Just then, I saw a person who had stopped fulfilling their vow to this ministry. Just then. You severed your divine connection. Well, we were the first to show you no matter how much they gave, none of his faithful flock was prospering quite like Thank Tilton you. himself. There's no religion there. There's no, it's all fraud. I believe so, yes. Vivian Elliott and her husband Mike were one-time followers who not only came to believe Tilton was a fraud, they're the ones who just walked out of a hey, Texas courtroom with a $1.5 million dollar judgment against him important. after they proved it to the satisfaction of a jury. He takes just little pieces of the Bible, and every piece that he takes out is only something he can turn into making money with. Vivian Elliott says Tilton also exploited her by dramatizing her past emotional problems just to entice others to donate. He ran and reran this testimonial about the Elliots on his success in live television broadcast seen on 200 stations across America. My father would take me for rides with him out, you know, to the store or any place. And he would pull over and try and molest me in the car. Although Vivian told Tilton's producers about such problems in her life, she refused to reenact anything. So a Tilton producer found actors to do it and put it on the air after forging Elliott's signatures on permission forms. Tilton's trial attorney, Rhonda Byrd, has suggested the jurors were duped by emotionalism and the fact that the foreman's spouse is a minister. Well, Elliot's attorney, Gary Richardson, says that's nonsense. He says Tilton is such an obvious fraud, the case would have been easier to win if everybody on the jury was a minister. They saw what this man is really all about, and uh, they finally had enough of it. Like a lot of people that were there that had seen us in the courthouse, they all said that they were rooting for us. They wanted us to beat this guy and get him off the air because America has just had enough of it. You know, they don't want to have to deal with people like him anymore. At least eight other members of Tilton's flock are also suing him for using their contributions for personal use. As for the preacher himself, he has divorced his wife and vows to keep fighting in court. More trouble for embattled preacher Robert Tilton. An insurance company for the former televangelist is balking at paying damages. Northfield Insurance filed suit in Dallas saying it should not have to pay any of a $1.5 million judgment against Tilton. Last month, jury members ruled in favor of a Florida couple. That case is under appeal. Do you believe Bob Tilton is responsible for your mother's yes. death? Yes. Yes, I do. Why? Because it was his influence that prevented her from seeking medical care. Mm -hmm. Controversial evangelist Bob Tilton goes back to court to face accusations that he lied to and cheated his former followers. The former's branch preacher lost his television ministry after an expose by ABC News. He has already lost one major lawsuit by a former follower and now faces more trials. Channel 8's Bill Brown was in the Dallas courtroom this morning and he joins us now live from our newsroom with the details. Bill? Renee, Robert Tilton has now been sued by 11 disenchanted former followers. Some of the suits have been thrown out, but he still faces other suits. Lawsuits by three groups of Dallas people have now been combined into one case, and that trial was to start today. It didn't. The embattled preacher showed up in court looking cheerful in the face of what may be heavy odds against him. Three groups of ex-followers claim Tilton promised them personal miracles but never delivered. They claim he cheated them and hurt their lives. Tilton is now being accused of fraud, conspiracy, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. One who is suing is Vicki Crenshaw. She says her mother, Mary Turk, had colon cancer and turned to Tilton's television show in desperation. Later, the woman put all her faith in the evangelist healing her and stopped seeing her doctor. 
soon after she died. She would, uh, again, share information, uh, quote from Robert Tilton, um, say that she had a miracle coming and she refused to go. She felt that if she sought medical care, that it would be a breach of faith and then she wouldn't receive her miracle. I know that he was lying to her because he said that he was in um, constant personal prayer for her and he didn't even know who she was. Tilton claims all of this is pure nonsense, that those suing him are just wrong, that it's a plot to deny him his right to freedom of religion. He says he has never hurt anybody. Forget whether you like me or not. Prayer is on trial here. They've taken prayer out of schools. Now they're trying to take prayer off of television. They say, no, Bob, everyone else can pray, but you can't. Why can't I pray? I can pray in America the way I believe God has instructed me to pray, and I have that right, and I am fighting for that right. I'm continuing to pray I'm gonna keep praying and I'm gonna believe that God answers prayers yes I believe in miracles and miracles are on trial he was just found to be a fraud and a con man just uh, not long ago these type of people have taken prayer out of our schools now they're trying trying to take my right and your right to not be able to pray on television or to pray the way that I believe God has instructed me to pray for miracles but this trial has been delayed. Lawyers for Tilton, his wife, and the church said they're not ready to go to trial, and they asked for a continuance today. Uh, District Judge John Marshall agreed. The trial has now been set for sometime in November. Other trials are backed up behind this one, so it looks as if Mr. Tilton will be spending a lot of his future time in a courtroom. Well, coming up on News 8 at 6, a federal judge disciplines Bob Tilton's defense lawyer for misrepresenting the facts. And the punishment includes a hefty fine. Rhonda Byrd has represented Tilton in a number of lawsuits filed against him, as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. He's wanting these people to prove... Dallas lawyer Rhonda Byrd has represented Reverend Bob Tilton since his legal trouble started piling up. You made it! Last April, before federal judge Joe Kendall, Byrd defended the preacher in a case in which two former church members, Mike and Vivian Elliott, won a million and a half dollar judgment against Tilton. In that trial, the man who produced videotaped testimonials that were shown on Tilton's television show testified. On the witness stand, he admitted that he forged the couple's names on a release form. Judge Kendall said, long after she learned that the producer had likely forged those names, Rhonda Byrd denied any knowledge of it. So the judge ordered Tilton's attorney to pay the Elliott's lawyer, Gary Richardson, $7,850. In his order, Judge Kendall wrote that Byrd misrepresented these events concerning the releases in her closing argument to the jury. Byrd's statements at trial were misleading, the judge said. They showed dishonesty, the judge said. Byrd's conduct has been deceptive to the court. I've been practicing law over 20 years. I have never, ever dealt with a lawyer like Rhonda Bird, ever. And what do you mean by that? Not being able to accept the things she says is truth, ever. Bird's attorney, Bob Wellenberger, says his client will appeal the judge's sanctions. Dallas evangelist Robert Tilton first lost his TV show and now his silo sign. The State Department of Transportation says Tilton's church ad on this silo along I-35 in Carrollton violates the U.S. Highway Beautification Act. The law forbids billboards within 660 feet of an interstate federally funded highway. Most of his other billboards that featured Tilton's picture have already come down following lawsuits over his ministry. Former TV evangelist Robert Tilton has dropped a slander lawsuit against a religious watchdog group. Tilton had sued the nonprofit Trinity Foundation and its founder, Ole Anthony. An attorney for Tilton says the lawsuit has been dropped for now, but the Foundation, Anthony, and ABC News remain defendants in a federal lawsuit filed by Tilton. They're accused of conspiring to falsely accuse Tilton of wrongdoing. Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton is trying to make a comeback tonight after legal problems that ruined his old ministry. But not everyone is excited about his return. Texas News 5's Jay Gray joins us now with details. Jay? Robert Tilton is working to put the problems of his past behind him, but longtime opponents question whether it is a kinder, gentler Tilton that is back on the air. Through Jesus. Here's Pastor Tilton. Oh, how I love to come on these airwaves. Robert Tilton is back on the air in four cities. Jacksonville, Florida, Washington, D.C., Canton, Ohio, and Charlotte, North Carolina. And there are reports that the pastor is working on a full-fledged comeback, which apparently includes this multi-million dollar North Dallas home and a new wife. Forget about me, 
what you've heard about me or haven't heard about me. Indeed, longtime Tilton opponents say the televangelist has changed. In, in the past, he was a uh, success in life, $1,000 vow, 100-fold blessing. Now he's very subdued, and there's a demon. Everything that Robert Tilton doesn't like is a demon. Now I'm going to hit those devils, so don't, don't be afraid. But while Tilton doesn't ask for money on his 30-minute daily show, Anderson believes his motives are less than pure. And if you're going to call, you need to call right now. Saddam Calls, Saddam. Anderson says, are used to develop money-making direct mailing lists. And it's pinpointed, very subtle, very high-tech marketing, advertising, all the techniques to use to, to get people to send him their money. Important to point out, we tried repeatedly to talk with Robert Tilton. He would not return any of our calls. Word of Faith Ministries referred all calls to Tilton's attorney, J.C. Joyce in Tulsa, Oklahoma. His office said he was also unavailable for comment. Speaking of Mr. Tilton's lawyer, what about all those lawsuits filed by his former followers claiming fraud? He will still spend time in court. Tilton has a date in court with ABC Television scheduled for June 15th in Tulsa. There are also five plaintiff suits Tilton must settle before that court date. Back here in Dallas, a federal judge has dismissed televangelist Robert Tilton's lawsuit against ABC News and a religious watchdog group. U.S. Judge Robert Maloney disagreed with Tilton's contentions that the network and the Dallas-based Trinity Foundation had engaged in a criminal conspiracy to falsely accuse him of fraud. Televangelist Robert Tilton won't have to answer to charges from three lawsuits filed against him. The Oklahoma Court of Appeals has ruled that freedom of religion protects the Dallas area preacher. The appeals court yesterday ruled unanimously to uphold a 1993 decision by a Tulsa judge who cited religious freedom. Three Oklahoma women had claimed Tilton fraudulently solicited money from them. Tilton says the ruling is a great victory. Three weeks before the trial, a Tulsa federal judge dismisses a lawsuit filed by televangelist Robert Tilton against ABC News. Tilton was suing ABC over a 1991 news report that alleged Tilton's Word of Faith Ministries failed to carry out personal prayer requests. Before the report, Tilton's ministries had a monthly income of about $7 million. Tilton claimed that Primetime Live destroyed his ministry by deliberately misrepresenting information. The judge will release his reasons for dismissal in the next 15 days. A Dallas judge has ordered televangelist Robert Tilton to pay a woman $640,000 for refusing to turn over records and for harassing attorneys. The judge ordered the money be paid to Norma Smith and her attorneys. Smith is alleging in a lawsuit Tilton caused her emotional harm by sending her written offers to cure her husband after he had died. Tilton's attorney is expected to fight the sanctions in court today. Dallas TV evangelist Bob Tilton is spending more time in court than in church these days. Already reeling from a big legal defeat, the flamboyant preacher now faces a major trial. Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. And there's pain right now in the area of your neck. Go! In the name of Jesus. Reverend Bob Tilton has always claimed he could do miraculous things, such as heal the sick. The way things are going for the TV preacher now, he could use a legal miracle. Once the king of the electronic evangelists, Tilton is now struggling to hold on to what's left of his multi-million dollar empire. In better days, the colorful pastor filled his church and farmer's branch with thousands of his followers. No more, says Ole Anthony, the Dallas religious watchdog who's Tilton's harshest critic. Yes, it's way, way down. I, sometimes it's as low as 110, 120 people from the reports we get. Anthony predicts Tilton will soon shut down his church. Anyway, how many of you saw we had some great victories this week and some lawsuits? Three more lawsuits thrown out of court. But four lawsuits remain, filed by former Tilton followers in Dallas. After being forced off television, the Texan got back on in a few small cities with his Pastor Tilton show. His new theology was that there was a demon behind everything that uh, Brother Bob didn't like. And he had to scream the demons out of existence. So there was a lot of screaming on this program. Go! Devils! Jesus! Name! Jesus! Name! Arthritis! Go! Pain! Go! Sickness! Go! Cancer! Go! But that show too ended. And now Tilton is not on TV at all. He does have a new wife, Lee Valentine, also an evangelist. And they have a little boy. I said perfect gifts come down from the Father above. Except for Martha. Hey! Soon, the family will move into the new house they're now building in Addison. 
A Dallas judge recently ordered Tilton to pay Norma Smith $640,000 as punishment for not turning over financial records. The Reverend claims if he has to pay that, he'll be bankrupt. Late in the afternoon, the Supreme Court of Texas granted Tilton an emergency stay, so he won't have to produce the records for now. Also, the Dallas Court of Appeals agreed to decide if the judge acted correctly in ordering him to pay the huge sanction. We couldn't reach Tilton to talk with him about any of this. The Smith case is expected to go to trial in Dallas next week. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News. And the cases of three other Dallas followers suing Tilton have been combined, but no trial date has been set yet. News today about the embattled televangelist Robert Tilton. In the midst of his legal troubles, he's found some new friends. They are the leaders of more than 30 churches throughout Texas. They have asked the Texas Supreme Court to throw out several lawsuits pending against Tilton. The preacher has been sued for fraud and already has asked the state's highest court to dismiss the cases, but it refused. The churches supporting Tilton say civil courts have no jurisdiction over religious matters. At the same time, these churches don't agree with Tilton's style of ministry, so they refuse to be identified. Texas-based evangelist Robert Tilton and his second wife have filed for divorce. Robert and Lee Tilton were married less than two years ago. She is also an evangelist. Only two months ago, the couple and Mrs. Tilton's three-year-old son moved into a new home valued at nearly $700,000. Well, just 16 days after he filed for divorce, evangelist Robert Tilton has changed his mind. In a statement released yesterday, Tilton says he and his second wife have reconciled. Tilton will continue to preach with his wife at his Farmer's Branch Church. A legal victory today for former TV preacher Robert Tilton. A judge dismissed a lawsuit filed by a former follower alleging fraud and emotional distress. Norma Smith claimed Tilton's ministry continued to ask for money in exchange for prayers for her husband's health, even after the man had died. A state judge also threw out fines imposed on Tilton for failing to produce documents relating to the case. TV evangelist Robert Tilton is headed back to court, but this time it's divorce court. Tilton had filed for divorce in November from his second wife, Lee, but announced that they had reconciled. Then on Monday, Tilton filed yet another divorce petition. Tilton cited discord and personality conflicts. The embattled minister has also reportedly fired many Word of Faith Church staff members who have ties to his wife. Coming up next on News 8 at 10, Robert Tilton is back in court. His estranged wife claims he hit her. From WFAA-TV, this is the News 8 Update. Why would you be scared of him? I just think right now he's making many irrational decisions. He's not thinking straight. The second wife of evangelist Bob Tilton charges he has beaten her and threatened her life. And now in the middle of a bitter divorce battle, Lee Tilton is asking a, ju a judge to keep her husband away from her. And dramatic charges in a Dallas courtroom top the update. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. At an angry divorce hearing in Dallas, Lee Tilton, the evangelist wife of two years, testified the preacher pushed her downstairs and hurt her so badly she'll need surgery. She said Tilton's heavy drinking made him violent. Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. Puppy love is real to the puppy. Can you say amen? It looked like a marriage made in television heaven. Lee Valentine, herself an evangelist. Don't let the devil steal your dream. Joining in matrimony with one of America's top TV preachers. Go! In the name of Jesus. But a happy union it was not to be. Amid accusations of drinking binges, infidelity, and beatings, Lee Tilton is now divorcing her pastor partner. His second split up in four years. In a family court hearing, the two and their lawyers tangled over how much money and property Tilton has and how much Lee will get. While both are ministers, most of the talk was not of scripture, the good book, and things holy, but of jaguars, yachts, million-dollar homes, and first-class plane trips. He's kept none of the promises that he's said and um, made a few threats, many threats. After their 27-month marriage, these days the Reverend is living on his half-million-dollar yacht in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. His wife now lives in their one-and-a-half-million-dollar mansion in Addison, officially the church parsonage. In seeking a court order to keep Tilton away from her, Lee told of her husband's wild drinking binges and violent rages. She said, he slapped me and knocked me against the wall. She said she was violently struck and said he knocked me down the stairs. Tilton's wife claims he told her he fears he's going crazy 
and he has wild visions of rats eating his brains. You're telling the court that you fear for your life when you're around Reverend Tilton. Is that still the case? Yes. Fear for your life? You think he might try to take your life? He's a very angry man right now. She accuses Tilton of sending church workers out to break into the house. There's maybe fifty to eighty thousand dollars worth of stuff that the church came out there with no court order, broke into the house, and just took stuff. I mean, ripped a safe out of the wall, took her personal item. Pastor Tilton did not refute any of the charges. He didn't say anything. You, uh, knocked your wife on the at another hearing, the church will try to throw Lee Tilton out of the house. And she will try to get her husband held in contempt. This bitter confrontation is a long way from over. On Monday here, the divorce hearing will continue. As he has for several years now, Bob Tilton is spending a lot more time in courtrooms than he is in church. Next on the News 8 Update at 10. And what's next for Robert Tilton's estranged wife after alarming allegations? New tonight, former televangelist Robert Tilton's second wife is evicted from her Addison home today. A judge ruled that Lee Tilton, her son and mother, must move out by next month. The eviction was brought on by her estranged husband, Robert Tilton. My what son is, is there and my 70-year-old mom. Well, we just basically want, we need, um, you know, we need a place to stay, that's all. And it's just been unfair. She still loves him, she insists, but if the marriage is lost, Lee Tilton seems dead set on getting from husband Bob the things she feels she has coming to her. If he and his church have their way, this million and a half dollar house won't be one of them. After some bruising legal blows for the once rich and powerful television preacher, now comes a winning round. After a hearing, a justice of the peace is giving Lee Tilton five days to get herself and her little boy out of the family mansion. When you hear the term church parsonage, this is probably not what comes to mind. The lavishness of this place reflects the hundreds of millions of dollars that Bob Tilton took in in his television ministry. Tilton's lawyers claim he doesn't own the house. The church does, and it's the church kicking Lee Tilton out. She and her attorney couldn't disagree more. But he's the church. Nobody can rule against him as he being, quote, the owner, pope, and everything else of that church. Attorneys for Tilton told J.P. Robert Foreman that weeks ago, his wife signed an agreement to be out of the Addison house by the 1st of May, but then she refused. The J.P. ruled her in violation of a divorce court order to leave and told her, time to go. How do you feel about the ruling? Is he, is he evicting you? I think um, they're trying, um, and uh, we're just holding on. Thank you. Gonna, are you going to fight it? Yeah. In the hearing, Byron Darkin was described as an official of the church and the one pushing the evangelist's wife out of the church and the house. Why do you want Mrs. Tilton out of the church? Can you tell me? Why won't you talk to us? Is there some reason you won't talk about this? She says she has a right to stay in the, in the house. Why do you want her out? In the past, when some labeled him a fraud who preyed on the sick and the helpless, Bob Tilton spoke up loudly to deny it. These days, his lips are sealed. His wife's lawyer vows to appeal the eviction order before the five days are up. He says he's ready for a long and nasty fight. As usual, from Mr. Tilton and his barrage of attorneys, uh, there'll be hearings in every court in the state probably before it's over. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News. TV preacher Robert Tilton and his estranged wife are back in court today. Lee Valentine Tilton says she wants her husband held in contempt of court. They're in the middle of a messy divorce case. Mrs. Til Tilton has told the Dallas Morning News that her husband is losing his life and his soul to alcohol and money. She says Robert Tilton physically abused her. She says he makes personal use of church money and that he hates Dallas and wants to get out of town. Robert Tilton's attorney says the fight should not be played out in public. He says Mrs. Tilton's claims are lies. After finding him in contempt, a Dallas judge today ordered evangelist Bob Tilton to jail. It happened during a hearing in Tilton's bitter divorce case. His second wife, Lee, accuses him of taking $100,000 worth of her personal items. Judge John Elder found the former TV preacher is not in contempt on four other issues, but should be punished for not giving back his wife's possessions. There was, however, one big legal victory today for Tilton. The judge denied an attempt to add his Word of Faith Church 
as a defendant in the divorce case. His lawyers say to do so would violate church members' religious freedom. Their religious beliefs are totally up to them. I believe in that 100%, uh, and that's not the issue. It's the right of control of the 30 or $40 million that Bob Tilton controls, uses the interest of, and used to pay any bill he chooses to pay by what he wants to buy. Tilton must go to jail if, by July the 8th, he has not returned his wife's personal things. The former TV preacher left the courthouse without commenting. An appellate court has reversed a ruling that found Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton and his now ex-wife guilty of defrauding a Florida couple. When asked yesterday about the reversal of the million-dollar judgment, Tilton said he felt vindicated. Yesterday, a Dallas judge ruled Tilton's second wife, Lee, may stay in the $1.5 million house owned by her husband's church pending settlement of their divorce. Bob Tilton must pay $8,500 in support and pay his wife's bills and her attorney's fees of up to $25,000. The actual divorce trial was set for December. A legal setback today for former television evangelist Robert Tilton. He lost another try in his attempt to sue ABC Television. Tilton sued ABC, alleging it and other organizations violated racketeering laws by conspiring against Tilton and his Word of Faith Church. Lower courts have ruled against Tilton, and today the Federal Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld those lower court decisions. The court said Tilton failed to make a case that the RICO laws had been broken. Evangelist Robert Tilton and his second wife, Lee Tilton, are back in court today talking divorce. The current issue is whether Tilton's once powerful Word of Faith Church and all its assets, including a $1.6 million home in Addison, will be part of the divorce battle. 11 News reporter Angela Hale is just back from a hearing in civil court where this could be a precedent-setting case, Angela. Well, Cameron, there is a long history of rulings in the...